Good morning. Welcome to Natasha Makes, it's Make It Monday. Yes, it is. Thank you very much for joining me and thank you so much for, um, you know, being amazing on social media over the weekend and getting in touch and getting involved. It's been absolutely fab. So, a little bit of background for you. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was absolutely thrilled to receive an invitation to travel to Holland and go to interview one of my favorite designers. Um, and that is a lady called Tuna Fananga, otherwise known as Tilda. She is the lady behind Tilda. Um, not much is known about her. She keeps herself very much to herself. So that posed a bit of a problem for me because you know I like to, um, uh, you know, for my CAFE interviews, I, um, I researched so hard for that. There's nothing out there. There's nothing out there on Tuna very very little so um yeah it's a very different style of interview she's very shy um and obviously she's norwegian so there's there's the language thing as well as she speaks impeccable english uh, so i was incredibly fortunate to get to spend some time with her what a lovely lovely lady and um, and so that interview will go out tomorrow instead of having textile tuesday we're going to have tilda tuesday and that interview will go out live tomorrow, well not live, it will go out at our usual um, Textile Tuesday time of 10 o'clock. So you'll find it on our website, you'll find it on Facebook, you'll find it on our YouTube channel, Natasha Makes, as well. So that's where you can find all these things. Um, now, a couple of little competitions for you. Those of you who have liked and shared the sneaky peek uh, video of my interview will be in with a chance to win a Lazy Days Charm Pack, five inch uh, Charm Pack set. So the winners will be announced on Wednesday for that. Um, and they're also available to buy on the website. Details for the website down there, down there. So that's that one. And Happy Campers, which is Tilda's latest collection and rather stunning. I'll show you a little close up of this later because yes, you've been asking to see it close up. So clearly I had to open one and clearly I will just have to use it. Oh, what a hardship, right? So uh, yeah, we've got that as well. That's in stock as well. Um, so take a look on the website if you love a charm pack. And also I've got a few more of these left and these are the pin cushion mini kits. So I know some of you have been saying, well, I've never tried any Tilda. This is a um, this is an official Tilda kit, so you can make the pin cushion from there. Right. Uh, so that's those. Let's pop those down there. Um, lots of you have been going crazy for the dash hound. There we go. I started on Saturday making dash hounds. Here he is. My top tip for anyone going forward would be stuff the legs better. Mine splays a little bit. Um, if you stuff them better, they won't do that. Aren't they cool? They're so sweet. So I've basically been putting together um, contrasting fabrics for you and the kit will make two. So just be careful how you lay them out, but the kit will make two. So you'll have, for example, let me show you today's, today's fabric colorways. I went for, let me show you this these two so you'll have one with the main body being that fabric and that is the belly and one with that as the main body and that as the belly and ears so that's going up on the website this morning and that is your purple option now i've got the same colorways i've been saving these for today for you and this is your teal option so again you'll be able to make did you get half a meter of each half a meter so you can make um, or you could just make a full one out of that or a full one out of that. Basically, there's enough to make two with contrasting what have you's. That's the way that it works. Um, now, you get a free um, instructions and template. I've, I've printed all that off for you for free. They are out there in interweb land um, for, for anyone to access. But I know that when I, when I asked a little while ago... Um, if you would rather have downloads or actual printed, categorically everyone's like, we want it printed. So I decided that if you were being good enough to shop with me here at Natasha Makes, and the very least I could do was make your journey then easy for you. And so you don't have to search around to find the downloads, print them off, cut it's all done for you. I've put that in, I've put that in for free. Okay, so 
Um, lots of you saying, hang on, 11.99 to make two dash hounds. Uh, that's amazing. Yes, it is amazing price. Uh, I, after the last show on Monday, had a mad dash down to a warehouse open, open house and managed to get a whole lot. I did some speed shopping because it was about to shut. I managed to get some fabrics at amazing prices and I've passed that discount on to you to celebrate, Tilda. <sighs> yes, you know, someone's got to do it, haven't they? So, um, and you know that I love Tilda and if I can ever find discounts for you, I will always pass them on for you because that feels only fair. Now, going forwards, the new collection and let's have a look at these. Oh, by the way, by the way, let me pop him over there. Um, we are also having another competition where you can win a Tilda dog. Here, let me pop that one away up there. Oh no, my snail's fallen off. Or the Tilda cat. And that all you have to do is anybody that has purchased any Tilda. So if you've already purchased Tilda products from me uh, since they started going live on the website over the weekend, you will automatically be entered into a prize draw and it is it, like a ticket per item that you buy. Um, so if you've already bought, you're already entered and if you're about to buy, then you will get entered and that will run up until Friday. So anybody that is celebrating my Tilda week uh, this week will automatically go into a prize draw and you could win either a cat or a dog. There they are. Okay, right, I think we're getting through the housekeeping now. Um, oh, and there is also, sorry, I forgot, there is also a kit that I've put together so that you can make one of these little cats with this coloured dress. Hang on, let me give you a little close-up of the old dress there. Ooh, pretty fabric, hey. Um, you can do that and she had two different colorways of bag now it's oh, i've kitted them all up ready to go but the green uh, the bag is in a lovely green in a ditzy print green so it's it's going to be in that sort of green color i've got a little swatch of it here uh, let me show you the swatch of it so the bag will be oh no move out the way duck there you go that will be the green that her bag will go with but you can just see that's going to be a lovely contrast and you'll really see her little bag. Uh, so you'll get all of the fabric to enable you to make the pussycat, the outfit, yeah, and the bag. And you'll get the templates and the instructions. Again, I've put those in for free. Uh, they are out there in Interwebland, but um, I've put those in there for you for free. Let's talk about this fabric as well. Because, because, because. I want your opinions. And if you can... I just want to know from you. <coughs> I bought these, okay? Now, <coughs> these are something a little bit special and they are not readily available everywhere by any means. Now, I have made um, a wealth of Tilda toys over, over the last few years, but I have always struggled to find her proper doll fabric. And it is, it is slightly different. Look, so he, oh, the duck. This is the Tilda toy fabric. When you buy any of her kits, whoop, then these will be the toy fabrics, the monkey, the face of the monkey, uh, that will be Tilda toy fabrics. And they just, they are much harder wearing. So, oh, there you go. This one again, this one was a kit. So that's your Tilda toy fabric too. Um, yeah, it's your doll making fabric. So if you make any of the angels or any of the dolls or anything like that, then there is a specific fabric that she uses for those and it's very hard to get hold of. And I've tried using calico and I've tried using other stuff. It just doesn't give the same effect. And this has been so stunning to use that I've bought some bolts of it. Um, so my question to you is, would you like, because um, a fat quarter will make like a cat or a dog um, this sort of size. So would you like a pack of one of each of those colors 
or do you want them sold by the half meter? You let me know how you would like them sold and I will put it up on the website for you. So there's no point in me chopping it all up and then you go, oh, I don't really want it. I will be kitting some of these. So this is the fabric that's gone in with the cat because that's the cat fabric. Um, and well, yeah, you can see down there, uh, we've got dog fabric and we've also got, there will be later on in the week, there will be a bear coming out and he will be in that with some very zazzy pants. Um, so there's lots that will be coming out throughout the week as well um, and I've got lots of orders due to arrive through this week so it's very exciting. Um, yes, so the other thing is the, uh, the duck uh, and I will demo the duck in a little bit. <coughs> I, um, like I say, I've tried other fabrics but once you start using Tilda and once you start having access to Tilda fabrics you're completely spoilt. Um, so like I said, this is your Tilda doll fabric. And then for the body, Tilda, which I didn't know until recently, does a whole range of beautiful solids. And I just can't match that exact tone um, with cheaper fabrics. Or they're not as tight a weave as well. Uh, so actually, I've made this whole one out of Tilda fabrics, apart from the beak because the pink hadn't arrived, that's due in today. But when you buy this kit, what you'll get is the book, you'll get um, a long quarter of that, half a metre of the blue, and this is all proper Tilda fabric, so the whole lot is gorgeous. Um, and you'll get a fat quarter of the pink, um, you'll get a long quarter of the tie, of the tie, of the um, scarf. I've got to cut that down. I got as far as making it because you all, you all on Facebook said, make, make the scarf, Natasha. So I did. Um, and then you'll also get some little five inch squares so that you can do the applique. Let's just have a look at her applique bottom, shall we? Let's just, oh, come on, switch over. Do, 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 do. Yeah. So you will get um, some fat quarters there. Uh, not fat quarters, five inch charm pack squares so that you can do you can do your own little applique on her buttocks. Um, and the kit will make a big one and a little one as well. So it'll make the two sizes and you get the book and everything and that is going up on the website today. Hooray! So that's the full kit. Uh, so we'll just pop her over there until whilst it is nearly her time. There we go. There we go. Okay. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Right. You want to see what's in the charm packs and then we can crack on, can't we? Fabulous. So, charm pack fabrics, we can see you will get 40 pieces. They are absolutely gorgeous. And um, I've got so many ideas for this fabric for you. Also, going up on the website today is all of the um, bird pond fabric uh, at amazing prices. And as well, there's also uh, going up, what else have we got going up? Backing fabric, Tilda backing fabric, the super duper duper extra wide stuff. Uh, that is 107 inches, so that is 270-ish centimeters. So perfect for my tote bags if you're, um, if you're making those. And a little note on that. If you bought the William Morris tote kit from Hochanda, the suppliers for the fabric sent out, uh, changed my instructions, took out the pictures, and um, there's an error in the measurements. So if you bought that from Hochanda, apologies, you will have an email with the correct version and the correct measurements sent out. It only some of you messaged me and went, mm, is this right? Um, so uh, as soon as I found out and did a bit of digging as to, because all of my versions were correct, um, found out and then, yeah, put it right. So that's that. But anyone buying it from me gets the correct version straight away. And that's on the website. Right, shall we have a look at just a few of these close up because they are a bit gorgeous. So this, doo, 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 
Come on, camera. There we go. This is from the Happy Campus range. So you've got those greens and teals. And the fabric from the Happy Camper range going forward with Tilda is incredible because the shrinkage, normally with cottons you'd expect shrink shrinkage of sort of 5 to 7%, percent mm -mm, 3%, 3% max. And also for the first time ever, these are certified with no nasties or anything like that in suitable for nightwear for children. And it's very, very, very rare to be able to get fabric like that. So this is why she switched over because so many of you wanted to be able to make kind of nightwear and children's wear out of, out of Tilda fabrics. And it hasn't been recommended before now. I know some of you do and that's absolutely fine, but that's up to you. Um, but now she can officially say, that's why she swapped, one of the reasons that she swapped, um, officially say that this, this fabric going forward from the ca Happy Campers range, far less shrinkage. Um, so that's that's rather lovely. So uh, here we go. Let's let's pop these back together, and that's the Happy Campers. And if that sells out, I shall get some more in for you this afternoon. So bear with me. Uh, don't panic. I will make sure that that I I stock up on some. I did buy some extra ones earlier. Something's just gone bang. Um, yes, so there we go. Right. Now then, today's show is... Uh, let's have a look. Dash Hound. The Dash Hound. Oh, I've also got Tilda Books online as well. So I've managed to get hold of those. I've been busy, you know. I've been very busy. And so, um, yeah, I've, I've been able to bring some beautiful books for you and there will be more books going up each week. So do keep an eye out on the books. I know a lot of you um, buy from, the, uh, from Amazon and stuff like that because it's free delivery f if you're a Prime member. But if you're buying anything from here anyway, you may just as well pop in a book because um, you've already paid your postage. Yeah, makes no difference, does it? Um, right. So when you get your fabric, you decide which way round. So the initial, there you go, the, the initial dash hound whoop, uh, was with a blue tummy, stripy fabric, and so you do contrasting ears and belly, and that's where that goes. Bear with me, just one moment. Theo, are you in there? I think the cat might be in the cupboard, you know, as you do. I can hear lots of banging, something's banging down there. Uh, right, uh, so you will get in your kit your pattern pieces, okay? And what you need to do is cut them out, okay? So you will cut them out like that. Stick them together because they go over two, two sheets. You will need some... Um, some sort of sellotape based things. Uh, so you've got your tail, you've got your ears, you're gonna cut out, well, no. I'll, sh I'll tell you in just a moment. There's your body, there's your underbelly, and you are good to go. So what you will do is, let's show you on these. You would say, right, okay, I want this to be my, my main body part. Okay, no problem. So, you do right sides together. And then what Tilda recommends you do is when you folded that in half, like that, is press it. Okay, so press, press, press. Actually, I'll put the iron on while I'm waiting. There we go. Uh, so press that so that's all nice together. Now you've got two sides. They're right sides together. So you simply put your body part on like that like so, body part on like so, let me move these out of the way, and then put some weights on, draw around, and then add your seam allowance. Now it's up to you, she does recommend the seam allowance, um, I just can't remember how big, um, 
Ba, 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 ba. Let me see, let me see. Oh, somebody asked the size, 16 and a half inches. That's 42 centimetres long. So, um, yeah, anywhere between sort of three and six mil seam allowance all the way around, okay? And then um, if you want, well, so because I do contrasting, so look, you see, you'll have, you've got, you've got so much space, you've got so much space left over. So this does your entire dog and you've then got all of this left over because in these spare bits, you can fit in ears and tail and everything else. So it, it really is, I mean, if you don't mind, you can do it like that to get maximum left over. So there's a lot of fabric left over. In the instructions, she says to cut a strip, um, but obviously I would just lay it out so that you get the best layout. So you draw around and then you can sort of cut round your seam allowance. <coughs> But you must add the seam allowance in or your toys will not work. The seam allowance is not on the pattern. That pattern piece is your stitch line, not your seam allowance. And that is the key uh, to these things. So then what you are left with, put that down there, is this. Like that. Okay. And I've got my pattern piece, I've got that. And what I do is then flip it and draw on the other side, draw again around so that I've got that on both sides. And I've done exactly the same here for my contrast belly. There's my pattern piece all the way around, like, <coughs> like so. I'm gonna have to look at my instructions now. Uh, so, um, uh, 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 here we go. And so you see, like, the instructions are really, really, really clear how to cut them out, where to sew to. Oh, hang on, that's a point. I didn't mark that in. <gasps> oh, no, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I better do that, hadn't I? Better mark that in. That was on my pattern piece. Don't, I mean, gosh, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that and forget. Uh, here. Right, that is my pattern piece. So I will leave that there for my turning through. And again, I will mark that on the other side as well, just in case. Uh, universal light box. There we go. Diddly 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 dee. And there we go. Now, oh, the other thing to check, there you go, you have a look at that while I just have a quick check on my messages. So there, that's where I'm gonna sew there and there. That's where I'm gonna leave. And then let me just see if we have got any questions. Don't know why I'm singing that to you. It's quite worrying, isn't it? Uh, 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 uh. uh Christy, oh, morning. When you turn your head towards the iPod, your voice goes a bit quieter. Yes, Lynn, that's because my microphone is there. Hang on. What if I put that? These are quite sensitive mics, actually. There we go. If I put that there, hopefully that'll catch, catch it whenever. Uh, good morning, Natasha. And Tilda says, Lynn, what a treat. Absolutely love her fabrics and her toys. Yes. Uh, just to say the sound goes low when you switch to close up with the dukey in the background. Oh, okay, right. Um, toy fabric fat quarters would be great. Okay, will do. Um, when I make Tilda toys, I stitch my drawn line, then cut much easier that way. Yes, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, love the idea of the toy fabric and the solids. I've got several Tilda books and think half meters would be good making all sorts of things from the books. That's just it, so many of you have got the books. Yeah, absolutely. Um, ba, 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 ba. Okay, alrighty. So good morning to all of you. Right, oh, I'll keep that, I'll keep that on. Okay, so um, take one body part, here we go, and I am going to sew along this top line, let me show you that, along this top line 
to there, stop there, jump across to there, and then sew up to there. So it's that top line that I'm going to sew, all right? First things first, when you turn on your machine, what you need to do, let me just get that looking right for you. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Do, 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 do. Oh, I've got bolts of fabric in the way. Um, I have actually got someone in to try and sort the sound for me today because I know a lot of you have been saying, oh, oh, oh. So hopefully we'll get that sorted. Right. First things first, I do a lock stitch, okay? Um, because I want, I'm, I'm going to be moving this around, so I want that locked in place. So just either go backwards and forwards. My machine has got a triple stitch. It just does in one space. So I, I just use that. And turn your stitch length down to 1.6. Now, if you have a beautiful machine like mine, then I've got my foot setting so that every time I come off my presser foot, my pedal rather, um, it will lift this bit. And what that enables me to do is go around corners easily. So that is a, I'm gonna lock off my stitch there, cut it, because this will be the tummy filling spot uh, and then pop that down yeah so it just allows me as I go around corners rather than to have to keep lifting the presser foot so as I come around here for instance I want to move the fabric around so the foot just comes up you can obviously do that manually if you don't have a super duper machine like this how good was Gary last week on Tuesday with his machine demos? Absolutely awesome. Now, lock that off and let's take it back to the... Oh, cut it. Lower the press foot. Cut it. Ha ha! Here we go. So, says next... Um, ba 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 um so along the legs as shown in the same way okay uh ba -ba 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 -ba. i'm going to then what you want to do now is kind of put this in so you're going to be looks like that. These now need to go right sides together and they will go in like so along there. And it's a lovely design because actually you do get, uh, you sort of get a bit of body shape. So it's this dash hand is not overfed. Look, you can see there, you do get kind of ribs and, and whatnot. Type shape. It's, it's beautifully done. Um, Tuna uh, has has dash hounds. They are her dog of choice, hence this design. And um, she's had Toto. I think Toto was her old one, uh, and she's got a new one, a little one. So she says she might bring out another pattern uh, based around her new one. And so just start to bring this up to here. Now this is where it can get a little bit fiddly. So I'm going to match the feet up first. Pop a pin in. Feet, pop a pin in. And a pin along those body parts there. And then this bit here will go up into there a bit like a bit like that so when you do it just sort of fold it back on itself up to there because you're going to that's going to go you're going to sew up to there in fact just let's just pin one side and let's sew from there all the way around 
on that side. Let's just pin up to his tail, shall we say? It's up to there. And pop a pin in there. So the kids are giving me a cold, so apologies for sniffing. And then let's take that to the machine and we'll just do that one side now. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay. So I would do it side by side. Make sure that everything else is out of the way. And as I get to that top seam, I'm going to do that locking stitch. And then I'm just going to follow around. This is why I have um, drawn the pattern on both sides. So I can flip this around and I could have sewn it from the other side. And that would work equally well. Now we see what I was saying about the foot. I can turn my fabric really easily as I go round. Pin out. So it's just, remember, that shorter stitch length. And she does say it in the instructions. Do read all the instructions before you get going. But this, I mean, Tilda got me into toy making. And this was where I started. Um, and I've really loved it. Because there aren't lots of complicated pattern bits. And you sort of look at the pieces and you go, oh yeah, that's how it's going to go together. So for me, the fiddliest thing is actually just stuffing them. And again, just keep turning, turning, turning around those corners. And making sure now, as I come down the belly, I'm going to make sure that the rest of it is out of the way. That's all lined up. Whee! And down we go. And again, about your seam allowance, as long as you are consistent with the same seam allowance that you use, you're going to be fine. And this is... You know, this is if you can do this, then you can do any of her toys, pretty much. This is, this is it. So round we go again. I'm going to take that pin out as I go. Pin that very badly, haven't I? And round that little foot. Yeah, when you stuff them, really make sure that you stuff. And I didn't. Um, you live and learn, don't you? But if I make another one, then I will. Really make sure that you stuff the top of the leg really well into the body. I didn't. I stuffed the legs really well and thought that would be okay. Really do stuff up there. Right, so as I come around here, I'm going to make sure that the rest of the fabric is out of the way. And I'm going to stitch up to that top point there. Whee! Pin out. Stitch, 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 stitch. And then I'm just going to lock that stitch off and then let me show you where we are at. So that is now, that is one side of the dog sewn. So I'm going to flip it and I'm going to sew now from up here and again this is why you want to make sure that all of this stays out of the way so that when I come through to here I'm gonna sew up to that point up to that same point there and then I will be good to then sew around the rest of the body so do the legs first go gently on the legs and then there you go from there so again this side is now sewn so I'm going to can you see look I sewed up to that top point there where it's marked I'm now going to push it the other side that's where I'm going to start so was pinned I just took the pin out so I'm going to start with that bit and I'm going to start with a locking stitch on that very top bit there let's go And when we go, and so 
good that I have marked everything. I'll try and go a little bit faster. Oh, the pressure, the pressure, the pressure. Whoops. Ah, that didn't help, did it? Um, just knocking everything off. Um, okay, so a note on toy filling. I have uh, got for you, I've managed to find some amazing toy filling and it's on the website. It is slightly more expensive than normal filling, only by like a pound or something, but it's, um, I've got it because it's made entirely of recycled plastic bottles. And I thought for those of you that are eco-friendly, and I know one of you, well actually several of you noticed that sort of the mo uh, was it the free spirit scrap? Someone said, oh, why is it in plastic packaging? But it was, no, it was all recycled and all recyclable. So I try and do my bit where I can. And the packaging that I've just bought um, is made from, what's it made from? Sugar cane. So it's, it looks like and feels like plastic, but it's actually made from sugar cane. So where I can, I will always get recycled and what have you. So if you are kind of environmentally conscious, then yeah, like I say, on the website, there are, um, there's toy stuffing, toy fill made of, um, made of old recycled plastic bottles. And it explains on there how it's how it's all done. So yeah, maybe pop some of that in your order as well, and you'll all be good, all be good to go. But there you go. So what you because you're making quite a saving on the actual fabric. I've got that at a really good price for you. So um, there we go. So I'm going to come up, let me just get that round to there. And what I love about this machine is that because it lifts, I can have both hands exactly where I need it to be. So I'm going to come up to that point there. Making sure all the rest of it is out of the way. Dee, 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 dee. Okay, so we've done that bit. Now we can lock all of that off. And we can have a look at what we've done. So now we have got the belly all stitched in. And if you want to, you can, well, we can press the seam once it's all, once it's all sewn. That is going to be your stuffing hole. That's the bit that we didn't sew when we sewed along that top edge there. So that belly is now sewn into there. You can now fold the legs down like that. It's a little bit rude, isn't it? Sorry, dog. Up there like that. So I know that my starting point is going to be is going to be there because that's where that's where I left off can you see that's where I've stitched to there that is my dog underbelly and I'll trim I'll trim that seam back but I've sewn to either sides to that point so I will fold all of that to one side and then I will start from there and go all the way around the top top part of the dog all the way around to the chest area here and again I can open up that seam if I want but it's going to be where I left off there can you see that's where my stitching stopped so that is where I will sew to and then that is the main body of the dog done which is incredibly fast, really, I think. So just make sure. There's a weird thing about, um, again, I'm going to lock those stitches off. When you, um, for some reason, when you press the fabrics together 
they just seem to stay. It's really, it's really weird. round we go and again going gently around those curves I'm trying really hard to do it so that you can see kind of one-handed sewing around that snout and keep everything out of the way for you and round you go And there is another bit just to take into account. Um, but all of this is in the instructions. So like I say, I have printed off the instructions. I've done that for you for free uh, because I know that sometimes it's a bit of a faff, isn't it, to have to go and find them. So I have done that for you <coughs> and added them in. Didn't have to, but it's done for you because I just thought, I know what, it, I, you know, I like to just have stuff ready to go. And because I, I put my pattern on both sides, I can, I can stitch around, I can follow that line round and then just come to a stop there, lock off. Okay, now, next thing to do is get my pinking shears. You're going to want to cut back because that's quite a big seam allowance that I've given myself there. So I will just go in with my pinking shears and trim that seam back, not too close. And then whenever there's a curve, I use pinking shears uh, just so that for general wear and tear, the fabric doesn't, doesn't fray. And also because it just helps take out a little bit of extra bulk, especially on narrow bits like his nose. There is a real thing, isn't there, about dash hounds? They're very, very popular dogs at the moment. I still giggle at um, Helen McCook's from the other day where she had clearly thought about the dash hound that she's going to have in her life. And can I also say to her, because she left the show, went away and went and got engaged. Uh, a big congratulations to you two. Now, here we go. We're on those paws. And obviously you will take your time and do this nice and neatly and actually follow your pattern nicely because you won't be chatting and doing it at the same time. And I'm just double checking as I trim around here that I'm not actually cutting the other side of the body because that would not be ideal. It's been done before, let me tell you, obviously. So we'll go round one side of the legs and yeah, you can, because this is a small area, you can come in quite close or you can um, get your scissors and snip in, <coughs> should you wish, take that bulk out and then round we come up to there, flip over, do the other legs. And because I left quite a big seam allowance, It allowed for me to um, to not to, to just go with the side that I'd drawn on, whichever side it was. I didn't have to worry that I only had one side with the pattern drawn on it. Coming round, we're nearly there. So if you're thinking, oh, she hasn't stitched right on the line. Now I've stitched on the line the other side, that's why. Round you come. Go. Let's put that away. And then turn through. Oh, there's some more. That. You can, what she recommends you do is just open up that seam and press it open. So that is what we're going to do. I'll do that now. Get my little ironing mat out. Now, I have to say, this has changed my life. 
I absolutely love it. You can tell I've got loads of fabric on it. Uh, so I launched these last week. Oh, a message from Alistair, from House of Alistair. He, um, uh, he sends out all of the block of the month and um, these were coming in. So these, when we brought these to air last Monday, they were, they were still being made. He now has them and they are now starting to be sent out, but his franking machine has gone down. Ugh. So the block of the month and these have been delayed in their dispatch. You haven't been forgotten and they are coming to you, so apologies for that, but his, his machine's broken. He's hoping it will be fixed today. Everything is packed up, piled up, ready to go. It's all there, ready to go. So as soon as that gets fixed, that will... Sometimes it happens, doesn't it? Um, so apologies if you're still waiting on your block of the month. You have not been forgotten at all. Like I say, there's just been a little glitch, a little glitch. So what I'm going to do here is just press this seam open. Whoop. Along here. And um, this is where along this body part because I'm going to be stitching that bit up it just really helps I find if you just press that apart and then because you'll slip stitch that bit later but look how flat that is it's amazing uh, and then you just need to turn everything through this is where if you have people in your life with little little hands and fingers, it's very, very useful. Or you can get out your Derek the Dobber. Out it comes. And then just poke out those legs, really work into those corners. And if you have either pinking sheared or if you've snipped around those corners, then you will get a nice gentle edge. If you are going in with a chopstick or something just make sure that it's not too sharp uh, when you poke through um, and this is what I found so when I've made Tilda toys in other fabrics uh, because you know I've tried the cost-effective versions right what I found is that because the fabric isn't the same quality you just when you're turning it through uh, your your pokey bit, tool bit just goes straight through it and then it's wrecked and then you've got to either try and make a repair or just bin the project and that's why over the years because believe you me I have I have tried that's why I also get the plane the tilde planes now uh, because they just I, I just struggle to find fabric of that quality I guess because she knows what her fabric is going to be used for it's um and she's very precise she knows what she wants really knows what she wants um and I really salute that I admire that oh I know what I've forgotten Hang on, poke his head back through. You have got on your pattern a little pleat. If you want to, um, if you want to give your dog some character, just pleat that. Let me show you. Ba -ba -ba -ba. I've marked it on there. Hang on. There it is. Pleat it. And just stitch over that, which I shall do before I forget. Um, you could put a pin in it if you wish. And do remember with these, I'm just going to lock that stitch off. Ah, I should have put a pin in it, shouldn't I? I forgot it on the first one that I did, completely forgot it, and um, <laughs> yeah, that was a bit of pain. So turn it through, and he should now have a lovely domed head. And uh, this morning, when I was busy making the duck, I said, Mummy, 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 can I help? Yeah, yeah, you can help. Um, so <laughs> he, had to, he had to stuff a duck foot. That was, that was what he uh, got tasked with this morning. So that was very helpful. Mummy, am I done? No, you haven't put any stuffing in. I know, you are really not done. 
If you do have small fingers, they are always helpful with these things. Um, and then, but if you follow where the marks are for um, for sewing, starting and stopping, and, and your turning through hole, it is it is plentiful for turning through. And as long as you do your um, your holding stitch, then it won't it won't sort of open up too much more. So there we have other leg. Ba, 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 ba. But I just love the shape of it. You know, you could sort of could have just done one long, one long sausagey shape that was just one shape, just one oval, if you know what I mean. But she really hasn't. She's gone and got the detail in there to sort of put the rib cage. These are not fat Dax hounds. Oh no, no, no. These are uh, nice trim ones. So this will be your other version. And um, just make sure once you come to to stuff them. Oh, you know what I completely forgot to do? I forgot to put any, any embroidery thread over his nose. So this will be... That is what your dog will look in reverse. So it's the reverse of this one. There we go. So this time you've got that as the belly and then we're going to have to do the ears. So stuff and really do stuff those little feet um, and then we are we are good to go. Well, let's, let's have a look at the ears and can you see where we pressed? Hang on, let's get a close up of that. Where we pressed. Come on camera. Wakey, wakey. Any minute now. Come on. Ah, there we go. Where I press those seams, can you see how that gives me a lovely crisp top line? Because I will slip stitch along, along there when I come, when I've stuffed. Um, and that just helps. I'm not trying to find out where my seam is or anything like that. It's all pressed neatly in there. So I'm good to just stitch along that line. Right, let's have a look at the ears. I want the lovely contrasting ears. Now, you've got ears and tail. Here they all are. They're all good. And um, so you will, it says cut four, but again, just lay it out on your fabric. Draw around. And then get your pinking shears and cut, uh, stitch, do, 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 then cut, okay? Um, and then you'll notice on the pattern, let me show you these. On the pattern, you've got this mark here. So you have drawn around there, stitched all the way around there, and then pinking sheared out. And then you've got these marks here. You are going to pull the fabric apart, get your little scissors and cut on that line. Okay. Very, very carefully, just on the one side, down to there. Whoops. I'm trying to do it for you on the camera. Just on the one side up to there and then you will use that as your turning hole but it means tell you what let's let's look at this here it means that because this <laughs> my big old fingers it takes me a minute uh, it just means that you don't have to slip stitch up the ears or anything like that once you get going with it it's fine you've just got to get that starting point to turn through and get your iron on. This mat has been amazing, I have to say, whilst I've been, um, whilst I've been toy making, because it's just always there. And it's always there as much as I need it to be in terms of it can be this full size or I can just fold it in half and just have a bit of it. It's fab, it's absolutely fab. I, um, before Alistair came up with, with this, 
I had actually ordered and it took ages to come one of those big thick wool pressing mats because I was really impressed with those when I was on sewing quarter and um, I was like oh god I've just spent the money on that and I was just like trust me you will love this and I absolutely do I haven't even bothered to get the other one out of the packet I haven't at all oh I, yeah um, so I'm absolutely thrilled with it and because this is so much bigger than than I could afforded could have afforded uh, is that is that English? Yeah, um, to have got with the uh, with the with the wool pressing mat, and of course this is what the tailors on Savile Row use, which is just wonderful. And yes, I do use it onto my mat. I do iron straight on because you can. Uh, there we go. So once we've done that, then you just press. So you poke all your seams out and press. And get your little stick in so you can use kebab sticks or if you've got a prim turning tool or something like that um, and just use that but you see when you stitch that on that little bit that you cut just won't be seen so then it's all about a bit of hand stitching so stuff him and then you know he will be to his full beauty decide where you want your ears to be now tilda suggests um obviously put the cut side in so that you don't you don't see those she suggests just a few stitches along the top i actually did a few stitches about there and then what that meant was that the ears could move a bit but again, that's all personal preference. And once his butt is lovely and stuffed, then stuff your tail, decide where you want it to be, and just stitch it on around the bottom. And that is how you make one of these. And I think there are going to be a lot of you given how many of you have bought them already. Oh, and then if you want to, just get some embroidery skeins and just stitch over the nose if you want to make a nose feature. And then I just got a fabric marker pen to put his eye on. Uh, so that's how you do the dog. And like I say, keep an eye on the website because this week I am going to be putting up lots of different kits. I am making the kits, I am putting them together so I can put the price on them uh, that I want to um, because that's kind of kind of up to me. And so to celebrate Tilda, because, you know, I only got sewing with Tilda because of, uh, well, I can show you, the first thing I ever made was this. That was my first Tilda toy, was the snail, and I just loved it. And that was when I fell in love with, with Tilda. I was like, that is, that is so cool. Well, he's lost his ear, he used to have a little necklace and I've lost that uh, over the years because he's been much loved. But um, I was like, this is amazing. The fabric is amazing. The texture of the fabric is, is joyful to work with. It's just wonderful. And that's how I got into it. And so I felt very passionately that if anybody is starting out with Tilda, um, I want you to try it and I want it to be at a price that was affordable. So normally um, for a Tilda kit, you would be looking at, 25 to 35 sort of pounds that's why I've brought it to you at 11.99 for the dash hounds and that will make two and give you some fabric to then play with oh my goodness use this for your English paper piecing it is divine absolutely divine there's a lot of tilde in Emily's English paper piece blanket that I made her um no the duck the duck the duck so um this will be kitted and this will go on the web later, if it's not already up now. And I think, I keep calling him a he, rather wonderful. Oh, Christine says so cute. Yay! Um, so, this has got, again, this is the Tilda toy fabric there. When you get your kit, it will be Tilda, um, 
It'll be Tilda Pink and Tilda Blue. Also, it's the tone of them. I can't match the same tones. And she's got such an eye for colour that it seems a shame to mess with that. So that's why I went with Authentic Tilda Fabric, both in the planes and in the patterns. So when you get your kit, you will get um, a long quarter for your scarf. And actually, I went by her measurements, but I, you can then trim it back. It feels rather long. Uh, so that will be the scarf. And then I just need to stitch it into into place and then I'll give you some little five inch squares so that you can do should you wish to applique the duck butt then do that um, and then oh look at the little feet aren't they cute love those uh, then I use a, a pen that is okay on fabric um, fabric markers this feels really mean but to set it you just hold it over. Now, when Stephen came down this morning, my husband, he did say to me, where is that going? So it's going in Emily's bedroom. She's gonna love it. It'll be her doorstopper. Um, it'll be in Emily's bedroom. And he said, oh, thank goodness. He said, because pretty much any other room and the dogs would have an absolute field day with it. I was like, yeah, no, they really would. Uh, but I had preempted that because let's face it, small hands are going to get hold of that and swing it around. So everything I have used is washable. In the book, um, she suggests that you stuff this section with rice. Okay, now that's fine if um, you don't have small people and dogs and other things that will at some point, get hold of it, swing it around, get it dirty, sticky fingers, and all sorts of stuff like that. What I've used is, I've used these. So I've used my eco stuffing through here, uh, made from the plastic bottles. I've done that. That's the only thing I haven't put in the kit uh, because I don't know if you already had stuffing, etc., etc. But it is on the website if you want to add it into your kit. And also, you can get these now. These are, let me show you. Ba, 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 ba. These are tiny plastic pellets. Now I know you're going, that's not very eco of you, Natasha. Ah, ba, 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 ba. Listen, right, because these are made from plastic that are offcuts from industrial processes. All right, they are washed, they are sorted, they are re, uh, remelted, remolded into these pellets uh, that they would otherwise have gone into landfill. So rather than going into landfill, they've been reused. Um, they're just off cuts from, from the plastics industry. Melted, remolded into the little pellets. And the beauty of these is they can be washed. So if this gets absolutely wrecked by one of the dogs or Emily or anything and there's jam or peanut butter or a multitude of various things uh, then the whole thing can go in the wash whereas if you've put rice or anything like that in can't go in the wash so that's just a little thing you can use rice of course you can I've chosen these because I love her and I want to be able to use her again can we also have a moment it was a little bit of a vanity project this morning when I didn't make her scarf. I wasn't trying to be lazy, but look, look at those seams matching and on the beak matching. I was so pleased with myself. Um, that sort of thing doesn't normally happen to me. So I was like, well, hang on, <laughs> it's actually worked. Do I want to cover up with a little scarf? Uh, but actually, what it does is take the pressure off you. If you don't match your seams, then don't worry. Should we talk? Should we go through this? Should we see how we make this? So, when you get your fabric, this is that's a long quarter. Okay, so um, a fat quarter would be sort of that bit put onto there so it's a, a big square sort of, well it's five centimeters longer one side rectangle if we're going to be pedantic uh, this is a 25 centimeter strip uh, cut from the full width of the fabric the full 44 inches salvage to salvage of that fabric 
that's what a long quarter is. So you'll have that in the doll making fabric for the head and you'll also have that in the fabric for the scarf because that calls for a long strip. You will have plenty left over. What I've put in the kit for you is enough for a big duck and a little duck. Okay, so when you get it, the first thing that you will need to do, let me just find it all for you. is so your half meter of your blue to there we go all the way along to your um to your top so head and bottom fabric and then press the seam open okay and again this was where I absolutely love this mat because it's just there and it's perfect and I'll just give this a quick quick press now. So the big duck um, fits beautifully on here and the little one as well. You, what I would say is if you want to make both out of this, do lay them out first because you're not going to be able to put in massive massive seam allowances i don't know if you can see uh with my markings here that this is the bottom of the duck butt so I'm, when i cut out i'm going to have to go carefully through there and then round so i'm going to want that to be uh quite nice so when you get your kit and you've got your book which comes as part of your kit and this is full. This is your um, hot chocolate sewing. It's a beautiful book and there's your inspiration. Full instructions in there and at the back uh, you get, there we go, you get all of your, um, all of your patterns that are two size and you just trace them off. And this is where I just took sections of these flowers. That let me let me show you this a bit closer. So I just took sections of those flowers for the applique, which we'll get to in a minute. But they are all your patterns. That is for the baby deer. That is for your large duck, small duck. Um, so you've got lots of different toys in there. Um, bowls, you've got appliques, you've got all different sorts of things, your butternut squash, uh, baby mice, you've got birds in there, what's that, that's the ragdoll friend, you've got all sorts. It is a really, really beautiful book. You've also got quilt patterns in there as well. That's the baby deer. Oh, cute. And again, you see, if, I, if you get the doll fabric by half metre or quarter, uh, fat quarter, then you've got that and then you can add in your favourite your favourite fabrics. Aren't they sweet? Aren't they sweet? And I think what my, uh, there you go, there's your little raggy friend. And again, this is the fabric, this is the face fabric. So if you've got a little stash of it, a little is going to go a long way because that's just arms and face there. And I use it for the face of the monkey, nothing else quite compares. And that was why I felt quite passionately about getting the proper fabric for you because it's not always that readily available. So you've got quilt patterns in there, you've got little pouches, you've got coasters. It's just gorgeous, really gorgeous. And you get that book as part of your kit. Ha ha, it's all in there. All right. Bags, everything. Beautiful book. So trace off your patterns. This is the size of the big duck. And this is the size of the little duck. They're Indian runners, aren't they? They must be. Yeah, Indian runners, I reckon. And uh, so trace them off. And then you've got a few little markings that you just need to be careful of. And let me show you that one here. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, so on the duck face, mark this, the beak off on both sides and make sure it's on the same bit on both sides. The same to where the neckline is. Mark that off on both, yeah, I have done it, on both sides. Okay, and the same with the little duck. The big duck and the little duck, both exactly the same to make. It's just the sizing on there. 
And don't forget as well to mark on that bit because you are going to trim that off. Okay, so in fact, I will do that now so that I actually remember because I didn't mark it off on the other one. I completely forgot. This is basically all that bit is giving you is um, a box bottom. So like you would with your bag, uh, you'd do a box bottom to give it more volume and space and make it sit better. We could have just sewn her so that she just went all the way around. But actually, if you look, what that shape does is give she's adorable isn't it is give you these little little leg bits very very clever and so she sits really nicely but if you know if you want to take her out like that there we go so um yeah just a few little things i need to just mark that on because i forgot 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 let me get a pen So you'll sew your um, neck and body bits together. That's all good. And then trace around your templates. Now, you are going to rough cut these out, OK? And that can sometimes be a little bit tricky. And yesterday, I went to something called Stitches, which is like the, the industry, the big industry show um, where you... Uh, you find sort of suppliers and things like that. So I went there and I found some fabulous gadgets and gizmos. Uh, I had a wonderful time. And uh, one of my favorite new gadgets and gizmos is electric scissors. I didn't know it was a thing. I didn't know it was a thing. Certainly did not know that I needed them. And boy, do I now need them. Uh, so, all I'll do is put my little weights on there. If you're going in with normal scissors, just, just be careful. But look at this. Look how cool this is. Electric scissors. Didn't know it was a thing. Whee! So leave yourself and you don't have to be too careful. An ample seam allowance. And I just thought, for anyone who is pattern cutting, how easy is that? Because I'm not having to lift the fabric and, uh, and move stuff around. Pattern weights down. So easy, there it is, cut, perfect. One, and look at all this fabric as well that you get left over. See, there's a lot of that blue, so you can put that towards other projects that you've got in the book. How cool are these? That makes me very happy. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I love a gadget. Uh, okay, so that's that done. Pattern weights away. And then I've got all of this to use. You could probably get um, get an animal, another animal out of this. Uh, not a duck, but you might be able to get a little bear or something out of that. You never know if you're careful about it. Or, uh, you know, the faces and arms and legs of things, keep that fabric because it's going to be useful. And then you've also got all of that blue as well. All of that blue. So, um, yeah, keep that for other projects as well. Really handy. Nothing gets wasted. Okay, uh, so the next thing to do is to add on the beak. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to get my pink. Now you will get proper Tilda pink, and I'm just going to cut a couple of squares off. And I'm going to pop that up. <laughs> so much fun. Um, I'm going to pop that there. A little way in. Pin it. 
and I'm gonna stitch along there. Hang on, which way around do I need it to be? This way, sorry. So I always have to stop and think. Is that right? Hang on. In my head, <laughs> in my head, let me cut this beak bit off with a seam allowance. Ah. Right sides together. So then when I stitch along there, that will go like that. Yes, okay. I get there in the end. Sometimes my brain just doesn't quite work like this. So uh, yeah, like that, stitch on that line where that beak is. So I've just chopped his beak off, cause you know, can. And I'm just gonna stitch along that line there. All right. And let's hope I've got that right. So I'm just gonna stitch on that line and I'm gonna do, again, a holding stitch. And my stitch length is 1.6, you can do 1.8. And I hope I've got this the right around. Yes, I have. Let me show you. Um, <coughs> so I have got that there. I'm going to press that seam open like that. And I've got all my beak fabric here. So what I'll need to do is get my template, pop that back over there, and then I will be drawing, when I find my pen, my beak back onto here. Okay, so just go around your template again. There we go. And then you want to do exactly the same on the other side. So this is where the beak is going to be. So make sure you've got that line marked on. But I'm going to cut, leaving myself a seam allowance. Like that. So I'm chopping off his beak. Beak fabric goes underneath like that. And again, this can all be really rough. And then just sew again down that side there. And off we go. Holding stitch. Don't want this coming undone while I'm working. Along that line. And what this is doing is ensuring that you will get a lovely meeting point on the beak. Like there. Oops, sorry. You see that meets perfectly there. Quite proud of that, not gonna lie, quite proud. So <laughs> again, uh, you can trim that little bit down, should you wish. What you've got is a rough seam allowance around here that we did with the electric scissors. Um, and then, Again, I'm going to press that seam open like that. I'm going to get my template again. This time flipped around. And I'm going to align that, that point there where, those, where that seam meets there and draw around. Doo, doo, doo. Um, and then all I'll do is just neaten, just take a little bit of that off. Like so. And on this one.
Now we're going to go um, right sides together. So there's my right side. Like that, like so, and then lay that on top there. Now, obviously, you've done a rough seam allowance here. That's absolutely fine. But what I want to do is just start to match certain points. And if you match the beak and the neckline where that changes, everything else just sort of falls into place. So what I want to do, much like you do with your quilting, get yourself a pin and in that crossover point, pop your pin and find it again there on the other side there. Do you know what, actually, I should have just sewn all the way along there, shouldn't I? I might just do that very, very quickly. Bear with me now. I don't know why I didn't do that. Um, just going to sew all the way along, so I've just got a little bit of leverage. Bear with, bear with. And there. Wee! Just makes it a little bit more, um, a little bit easier. There we go, that's better. Just press that open. Do do do. And this side. Do you know, sometimes it all goes a bit wobbly, doesn't it? May as well just sew all the way down there again, actually. Right. As we were. Sorry about that. Little interlude there. Um, so. Oh, I can cut that back as well. Oh, that's my mother-in-law ringing. Pam, doing my thing. Can't speak now. If anyone wants to ring right now. Uh, there we go. Um, she's obviously not watching, is she? Do, 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 do. We're, um, we're going to the theatre, taking Freddie to the theatre, which I'm really excited about. Right. So she's obviously ringing about that. Right, there we go. So, uh, yeah, as we were, through that point there, pop your pin. And then on the other side, you want to find where that goes through. Let me show you close up. So on this side where that fabric changes, pop my pin, and then on the other side, I want to make sure that my pin goes through the exact same point there. Can you see? There it is. On that, that point, on that seam there, wiggle your, um, wiggle your pin about. And just pin and also do it on the bottom bit there as well so I'll repeat that process there and if you can just manage to mark up pinpoint those points where the fabric changes top and bottom then it will all work out beautifully there we go, through there. There we are. So I've now got those pins both in the point that I want. So that's all going to line up. And I'll just pop a pin in there, pin in there. And then we come down to the neck. So you can see all of a sudden, this is kind of lining up quite nicely, isn't it? And I'm going to do exactly the same at this point here, I'm going to stick a pin through there on that line where those match 
and I'm going to find it on the other side. It's kind of easier by this point. Put my pin in there and do exactly the same. This point and then that will match around the neck. There. Oh, yeah. And then all you have to do is start from here and so all the way around, remember having that stitch length 1.6 between 1.6 and 1.8, so in down to there and then you can turn it through. Because I've left a wide seam allowance all the way through, uh, as long as those points there and there are matching, sew around, you'll be absolutely fine. And then you'll have it to, uh, to turn inside out and I'll show you how to do the feet. So for the feet, two pieces of fabric together, you wanna draw on the feet like that. And this is where some people go wrong. They're like, oh, is that, has that got the seam allowance? No, that has not got the seam allowance. So I've sewn, you have to excuse it, half pint sat on this and decided to shed a whole load of hair on it. Uh, so that is your stitch line. Okay, so when you get your pattern, that is your stitch line. Um, so I'm just gonna stitch all the way around there. I've done it on that one and I'm gonna stitch all the way around there, okay? And then that will be the feet, almost, almost done. And again, as you go around the feet, take care around those curves. And it just, I don't know if you can see, I'm, I mean, I'm just doing this one handed. That's because my machine feeds everything through beautifully. Um, and I'm just twizzling the fabric because I know that this has got fabulous feed dogs, which are pulling that fabric through. Um, I can, I'm not pushing or pulling. And every time that foot lifts up, I can just adjust it rather than having fabric starting to bunch underneath my foot because I'm trying to eke and, and really play with it under the machine and force it. Look, just with one hand. Round we go again. And this is why this machine has been amazing. It's just those little, those little things have made such a difference for me with my sewing because I would have gotten impatient and just tried to um, bunch the fabric as it went round rather than lifting the foot and turning. But honestly, just lift and turn, lift and turn, and it does make, it gives a much better finish. I'm just gonna put holding stitch and then cut, okay? <coughs> Let me just show you that there. So that's now both feet stitched around. And then all I'm gonna do is go in with my pinking shears and cut it out. Careful not to go too close to my stitches. I don't want to cut my stitches, but I'm just taking the bulk out, especially round, round the toe of the foot, where you've got those curves. Round and round and round we go. and then turn through. Uh, this is where if you have someone in your life with little fingers, then uh, that is always useful. Ooh. I wonder if my turning tool will work. Let's try this. We'll work with feet. Mm -mm -mm. I'm gonna give it a go. Yay! There we go. If you've got the prim turning tool, that made life much easier. I'm going to see if I can stock them. Um, 
There we go. Now, just turn your feet out. Again, easing into those corners. Now, this pink fabric, you will get proper Tilda stuff. This isn't, so I'm being really, really careful because it is a slightly lighter fabric, but you'll get proper Tilda stuff, so you'll be fine. But just go easy on those seams. Um, if you've decreased your stitch length to 1.6, to one or 1 1.8 something like that then you you know you're you're less likely to put your your pokey tools through but just <coughs> what i'm going to do is just give that a quick press because the next thing is putting the the toe detailing in yes that is how i spent my morning doing duck toes now um let me show you here these wonderful feet that i'm very fond of look aren't they fabulous that's the one Freddie stuffed, and that's my one. And um, it just gives that character, doesn't it? So what you're gonna do on the pattern piece, if I find it over here, you've got these marks, and you're just gonna transfer that onto there. This is a pale pink, okay? So what I do with my, I free, I free hand drew mine, but what I like to do, is use a water pen. Now this is personal preference. If you have a marker pen that you know is not gonna mark and will come off, um, then great, use that. But if you can't guarantee that, that's where a water pen is fab. And I, because that gives me a mark to go on and that will just dry. So I'm just going to stitch on that line. Ooh. And now there you go, can you see? That will just dry. That will dry and, and the mark will be gone, which is fab. Pop my iron on there and it's gone. So I'm not having to worry about marking the feet. I'll put that over that one. I can see, I can see through, I don't know if you can. And again, that's it then marked with the water pen. That's why these are great. And it's just having the right tool for the job. You can do without it, of course you can. But when you've got it, it's like, oh yeah, that makes life easier, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And then that's my feet all sewn up. Let's just trim that trim those little bits down and then you just stuff them now <clears throat> one thing to note I will I've just realized have to just very quickly sew around the duck so that I can show you um, this bit here oh no when that is sewn you will cut that bit out, okay? And then you will pull it apart and it will then go flat and you stuff the feet into that and hand sew all the way along it because that's basically it for the duck. Um, if you want to, so I did, um, I did the applique on my duck butt um, before I stuffed him and then I realized actually that was a really silly thing to do because that nearly disappeared on the corner so what I would say is stuff and then put your applique on should you wish and to make the scarf all you do is um, for the, the measurements are in here but for the duck for the big duck it's a two and a half inch strip and you fold it lengthways and you sew the seam pull it through 
and then just press it and then you can decide how long you want it tie it around the neck and you will just put a stitch in to hold it exactly where you want it it's a two inch strip for the for the smaller duck um, but they're going to make a fabulous pair aren't they when they're done big one and a little one and for the applique for the flowers let's just have a very quick look at that <coughs> In the book, you've got all sorts of patterns. So I just drew around some with my bonder web. And you can see here, I've then just stuck it on. I will, in the kits, I will put, and the, these will vary, but I will put in some contrasting five inch squares and then just cut round that, cut round the middle bit, stick one on top of the other and then onto there. Um, and that's it you are you are good to go that is your duck done so we're pretty much done i think let me just check to see if there are any more uh, any more messages um electric scissors my mum had a pair back in the 1970s um she loved them said jean yeah do you know it's great and especially if you um if you suffer with hand fatigue from cutting a lot and these are so about these these that Okay, let's just get it out there. They're not cheap, but they're not cheap because they're great. These go up and down at 6,000 uppy downy bits per minute, which is why it just glides through. Um, this is why I love them. I live in fear of the kids getting hold of my scissors, but as long as when I'm not in, I take the battery out and that's rechargeable. And you've also got another thing so that you can have it on a lead plugged in, but that has got something like eight hours of use in it, continuous use in it. That's not sharp. They, they just, they blow my mind. They are amazing. But if you are, especially for dressmakers, um, they're fab because you don't have to lift the fabric up like you do, um, you know, if I had patterns out and I wanted, and I had to cut them with, with fabric scissors, I have to lift them. Whereas these just go underneath and glide with the pattern weights on and that's fab. So much love for that. So that's why I've got these. And also just if your hand gets a bit, they're great. Um, Hazel said, on the dash hound kits. <laughs> Have all of them gone? Have the teal and the purples and all of them gone? Oh my goodness. Um, leave it with me. Let me see what's on my next delivery and if I've got any more of that fabric in this delivery that I managed to get at that price because I can't keep that price up normally i got that on a special deal that's why they're just 11.99 um and then i put in the pattern um for free um oh lisa lamb's watching hello um i have electric scissors but they are now blunt from cutting fleece i need a new pair well and these are fab they're absolutely fab i got them through juki and i know so i know the quality is going to be great uh kits aren't showing on the website yet i will look into that um, is the pattern in the kit or do you have to buy the book? Jeanette, what's the So, if you've bought the Dash Hound, I have printed off the pattern for you because it's out in the public domain. I've printed off the pattern for you and I've put that in for free on lovely quality paper so that you will get um, a pattern that you can reuse and reuse. If you are getting the duck, um, then that is in the book with lots of other patterns as well. Um, so you can make the pat the kit will make two ducks and you get the book and you'll have lots of fabric left over to make other things in the book. So I think that's I think that's pretty much covered everything. Do keep an eye on the website for lots of other deals coming to air. I'm going to be making up lots of other toy kits um, as and when my deliveries come in. So um, yeah, and also there is fabric available from Tilda by the half meter at great prices. So look out on the website for that. And for the first time, I've got Tilda backing fabric, the super wide 107 inch. That's 270 odd centimeters. With. So I've got some of those and if they sell out, I will reorder and make sure that I keep those stocked. Um, 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 what else to tell you? If you want the plastic pellets, they are on the website as well. If you want the eco fill, that is on the website as well um, for your, your toys. 
oh gosh, what else, what else, what else? And again, if that sells out, I would just restock. So don't worry, that's no problem. I can have that back in uh, stock by tomorrow. Gosh, 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 gosh. Oh, Lynn said her first Tilda toy was also a snail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I want to mount it onto some, on, on a wooden block and put all the, uh, put the buttons on as well. So that's, I'll, I'll get that far. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, if you have bought anything Tilda from Friday up until this coming Friday, you will go into a prize draw to win one of the Tilda toys. If you have liked and shared on Facebook the little sneak peek that we had with Tilda, then you will go into a prize draw to win um, a charm pack. And don't forget, 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, it's Textile Tuesday, but this week it's Tilda Tuesday, and you will be able to watch my interview, exclusive interview, with Tuna Fananga, the designer, the woman, the genius, she's amazing, uh, and an all-round lovely lady behind these fabrics and these designs. Uh, that's it from me this morning. I hope you've had a lovely morning. I hope you have a lovely rest of the day and it's not too windy and breezy where you are after naughty storm, Dennis. Uh, have a lovely rest of the day. Take care. Bye-bye.